for his opening comments on where you think the workforce needs to be going forward, the trends that you've picked up over the past 12 months because of the pandemic, which of those trends do you see now having forever altered what it will mean to be a successful member of the global workforce? Mr. Ryder. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Raul. Um, well, let me say that the, the photograph of global labour markets uh, during 2020 is a very ugly uh, photograph. Uh, we've estimated that uh, global working hours have gone down by 8.8%, the equivalent of 225 million full-time jobs lost around the globe. Uh, this is a bad place to be in. Uh, and as we're scanning the horizon for the future, being in this deep hole doesn't, doesn't help us. One thing I want to draw attention to, particularly in the context of this debate about skills, is that a large part of this uh, loss in employment and, and work is due to people withdrawing from the labour force. We think that 81 million people have become inactive uh, in, in, in the global labour force over the last year. How are we going to recuperate them? How are we going to reach them in terms of the skills acquisition that they probably more than anybody badly need? Second point to make, uh, Raul, is there has been a massive interruption of uh, education and training in the course of the year. And this, of course, doesn't help us. We have seen a remarkable migration uh, to some extent to online and online and distance learning techniques. But this is very unevenly spread. Uh, we know that access to the connectivity and the opportunities are very uneven. Very worryingly, we've seen school kids simply dropping out uh, from, from distance learning uh, uh, processes. And then looking forward, what is this new normal, which is talked about so much, going to look in that hopefully not too distant um, post-pandemic environment? Uh, well, I think we need to be cautious because we need to make a distinction between what we are doing today and having to do, if you like, under the duress of living with COVID-19, and what we can choose to do once we have hopefully vanquished through vaccines and all the rest, the pandemic. So I want to make the point that we have choices about where we go and those choices will fundamentally affect the skilling requirements of the future. So if we look at the skills required for the green economy, uh, well, that depends on policy choices that will be made, for example, in Glasgow uh, later this year. If we look at the care economy and the skills there, all of these things come out in the, the WEF report. It's going to depend on policy choices. So there's a lot in our hands. And my last point, Raul, and I think this probably will concentrate our minds in this conversation. Of course, we have seen an acceleration of the pre-existing trends towards digitalization of work in, in various aspects. I think the question is, is this simply an acceleration of the path we were already on, or is it taking us to a different place? I'm not sure I know the answer to that question, but I also think that if we are imagining a world where digitally intermediated ways of working in the future are going to be more predominant, then we have a really wide bundle of issues to address. Skills, of course, but issues of regulation, issues of employment contract. It's a whole agenda for action, and we have to address the whole of it. I'll leave it there. Thank you. You've touched upon multiple layers and hopefully we'll build on these as we go along in this conversation.